Hi there, this is Craig Beck from craigbeck.com and today in the video I want to talk about porn addiction. How do you stop porn addiction? It's a sensitive subject and some people don't take it very seriously. But trust me, when this gets into your life, when this takes over, your everyday existence and becomes an obsessive thought, becomes an excessive practice, it's just as devastating and as upsetting as any other addiction. But there's some big questions here. Is it an addiction or is it just a habit? And is it something to be ashamed of? Is it something that you should take action to deal with? Or does everyone do it? So let's talk about that in today's video. But first of all, let me tell you how hypnosis works to get rid of our bad habits, addictions, phobias, and fears. Okay, so let's talk about how hypnosis and hypnotherapy is so powerful at fixing problems in our life. Uh, I've been a hypnotherapist for over 25 years now, and I don't think I've ever found anything quite as powerful for just going in there and making fine tunements uh, to our subconscious mind. And that's why it's so powerful at helping with fears, phobias, bad habits, and things like that. Now, there are some things uh, it's not so good at, and there are some things that are, are quite complicated, and hypnosis is too much of a broad sword. For example, uh, as you probably know, I run stopdrinkingexpert.com where I help people to quit drinking. And I would say that the number of people who have drinking problems who can fix it with just hypnosis, less than 10%. And the reason for that is that it's, it's a more complicated subject than it first appears. Because nobody's drinking alcohol really because they like the taste of it and they just can't get enough of it. Most problem drinkers are consuming alcohol because they're trying to cover up a bigger problem. So actually, the alcohol use is a symptom of a bigger problem. So if you use hypnosis to go into someone's subconscious mind and you say to them, uh, you, you find alcohol disgusting from now on, they may well agree and go, yeah, I do. I do find alcohol disgusting, but they're not using it for that reason. They're using it to escape pain, to get away from something else that is causing them distress. And that could be anything. It could be being in a bad relationship. It could be loneliness. It could be trauma from childhood, but you don't know what it is at the outset. So to use hypnosis on its own, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's like tossing a coin. It's, it's, it's too random. Now, where hypnosis is very useful is for quite specific fears and phobias and bad habits, like procrastination, like uh, overeating, like smoking, things like that. And the reason hypnosis works so well is because it allows the hypnotherapist to place powerfully positive commands into the subconscious mind. So the human mind, it has two parts. It has the conscious, and it has the subconscious. Now the conscious mind is tiny, but it's arrogant, it thinks it's huge. And what the conscious mind does is it asks questions. It's basically an evaluation computer. It's always judging, it's always asking questions. So when you're on Tinder and you look at a picture and you either swipe right or left, that's your conscious mind. It's judging, it's saying he or she is attractive or not. It's too hot or it's too cold today. This is your conscious mind. It's also the part of your mind that questions yourself. Am I intelligent enough? Am I attractive enough? And so on and so on. This is where all our negative thinking comes from. And you might think, well, the conscious mind sounds like a pretty negative thing to have. But actually, this constant asking of questions is a life-saving process. Because it's not just deciding who's attractive and who's ugly. It's also saying things like, how fast is that car approaching? How hot is that pan on the stove? And so on and so on. And these questions are saving your life every day. Now, the other thing to tell you about the conscious mind is very weak, can't do much. In fact, one or two things at a time, that's it. And that's why when you were a child, someone challenged you to pat your head and rub your belly at the same time, and you couldn't do it. Or you could do it, but you looked like you'd had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> it's too complicated for the conscious mind. And because patting your head and rubbing your belly is not something you do every day, it has to be done consciously. You know, if you had to move your arm consciously without using the subconscious mind, to move your finger from there to the tip of your nose, it'd probably take you about four hours. Because that movement there 
requires the coordination of about 57 different muscles. For your, for your conscious mind to do that, it's too complicated. So this is where your subconscious mind comes in. Now your subconscious mind is vast, it's infinite, and it can't do just one or two things at a time. It can do millions of things at a time. And right now, as you're listening to me, it's beating your heart in perfect rhythm. It's controlling your breathing. It's controlling your body temperature. It's aware of all sights, sounds, and smells in the room where you are now. It's amazing. And it does it all even when you're asleep. It keeps you alive. It's a fantastic machine. But the thing you need to know about your subconscious mind is it never asks any questions. It never judges. So if your problem is you're overeating, and you're getting fatter and fatter and fatter, your subconscious mind will never say, hey, 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 are you sure you want that donut? It'll just do. Never ever questions your judgment. That is the job of the conscious mind. So if we know this, it means that if we can get into the subconscious mind somehow and place a command in there that's positive and to your benefit, we know that your subconscious mind won't question it. It will just implement it. Fantastic, but there's a problem, and it's a big problem. Your conscious mind is like a guard dog at the entrance to your subconscious mind. It's standing guard, and nothing can get into the subconscious mind unless it first goes through the conscious filter. So let's say that uh, you're afraid of heights, and, and I say to you now, you're no longer afraid of heights. Your conscious mind will instantly go, no, I am, and throw away that statement. It won't get anywhere near the subconscious mind because the guard dog assessed it and dismissed it. You know, if you're currently overweight and I say to you, you are slim and attractive, your conscious mind will go, no, I'm not. Refuse to accept it. So what we do in hypnotherapy, uh, and by the way, there's a huge difference between stage hypnosis and clinical hypnotherapy. In hypnotherapy, it's like a guided meditation. And the sole purpose of this relaxation process is to make your guard dog a little bit sleepy and distract your guard dog. And when your guard dog is distracted and sleeping, it means the hypnotherapist can creep into your subconscious mind and implant the suggestions. Now, it's not a one-shot wonder. It's not a silver bullet. It's not like you listen to a hypnosis download once and, hey, presto, you're cured. In fact, I advise people who use my hypnosis tracks to listen every day for 21 days without fail. And the reason for that is we know roughly it takes about 21 days for a new habit to form, for a new program to embed itself in the subconscious mind. So stick on subject for 21 days and you'll start to see some fairly dramatic changes in your life. I hope that helps. So hypnosis is a powerful tool in the box because it allows the hypnotherapist to make a subconscious command stick. And when it comes to pornography addiction, uh, this is just as valid uh, a problem as any other. I know it's something that has a lot of stigma attached to it. It's uh, certainly something that a lot of people suffer with uh, and never talk about because it, it is embarrassing to talk about this sort of thing. Um, and the problem with, with pornography addiction, and I do genuinely believe it is an addiction because it lights up the areas of the brain that are affected by other drugs, by other addictions, including sugar, cocaine, alcohol, nicotine. I mean, if you scan a person's brain, you will see that there is a similar activity. And this is purely you know, a reward response to the stimulus. That's what you get addicted to. You get addicted to that release of dopamine and feel-good chemicals in your brain. And just like any other addiction, you get desensitized to the substance you're using. So, you know, when you first started out drinking, you could probably get completely drunk and out of your head on one can of beer, and one tin of beer. And then fast forward a couple of decades, and even half a bottle of whiskey is not touching you. You still appear to be completely sober. And sober. And this is because of the tolerance that you build up to the substance. Uh, the best way to describe that is imagine if I blow a trumpet in your ear. 
The first time I do that, you'll be like, oh, it, it hurts, and you'll have a response to it. Now imagine if I blow that trumpet in your ear a thousand times. Eventually, you won't be able to hear it anymore. You will become desensitized. Your body will become damaged by the repeated use of that thing. We know this is true with other drugs. We know it's true with nicotine and alcohol, and I believe it's true with pornography. But it's true in a different way, in that not only does the user start using porn more and more to the point where they're neglecting serious obligations, their commitments to their family and work and things like that, and they're using pornography at totally inappropriate moments, for example, while they're at work or while they're looking after children and things like that, but also the content of what they're watching becomes desensitized as well. So while they may have started off watching what you would describe as softcore porn, pretty basic nudity, pretty basic sex acts, eventually that sort of thing stops lighting up the reward center like it used to. And the porn addict goes searching for more and more extremes of pornography. And they start getting into hardcore pornography and perversions and kinks. And if left unchecked, that can progress into illegal pornography because they're always chasing the next high. And the next high has to be higher than the one before because of the tolerance. Look, this is a much bigger problem than anyone knows about because the vast majority of people who are struggling with pornography addiction are not admitting to it. They are worrying about it behind the scenes, behind closed doors. It is damaging their life. It is making them miserable and it is causing serious harm. But it's so embarrassing that they'd rather stick with the miserable existence they have than actually go looking for help with it. And I totally get that. The good thing about these hypnosis downloads is you can download them and you can use them in your own private space at home and nobody need ever know about it. I believe it's effective. I believe it's a solution to the problem. You will need to work and put some work in on this. This is not just a, a magic potion or a silver bullet. Nothing worth having in life is that easy. But if you get serious about this, just like anyone else with an addiction and say, right, enough is enough. I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to put the effort in. If you have that mindset, then you will get a result. But don't assume that hypnosis on its own without any input from you is the end of the story. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment on my YouTube channel. It'd be great to hear from you. Uh, and if you're interested in downloading my uh, How to Stop Porn Addiction Hypnosis Track, head to the website right now, www.craigbeck.com. Thank you. Unleashed Live. Spend one amazing day with me and learn how to love yourself more and unlock your full potential. Visit www.craigbeck.com.